Hi, and welcome to module one of video lecture five, covering the integral. In the previous two lectures, we talked about the derivative. The derivative helps us understand the slope of the line, the instantaneous rate of change of, some, of a function. The integral is in many ways the opposite to the derivative, the opposite of the derivative. The derivative figured out the slope of a line, the integral figures out, in some senses, the area under the line. So for instance, if here's a function, at this point here, the slope of the tangent line is over there. That's the derivative at that point. The integral between here and here is the area under that curve, the shaded area under the curve. This tells you what an integral is. Um, so it, instead of breaking it down to give you the slope only, it builds it up to give you the area under the curve. We'll discuss this much more in the next module where we we'll talk about definite integrals, this interpretation. The key here is sort of the opposite of, the, of a derivative. Computation is also the opposite of a derivative. For instance, um, when, you, when you add one to an exponent in a derivative, sorry, when you subtract one from an exponent in a derivative, you add one for integral. So the derivative of x to the n, recall, was n times x to the n minus 1. The integral of that same function is 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. We've divided instead of multiplied by the exponent, and we've taken it to a plus. We've added an additional power instead of removing a power. It's the opposite. All the rules we're going to learn for integrals, to compute integrals, are have analogs to the rules for derivatives. Um, so that sounds pretty good at first, right? So a lot of the stuff we've built up and learned in learning about derivatives will apply to integrals. That's the good part. The less good part is that we'll find for integrals everything is a little more complicated. Whereas for derivatives, we could compute most derivatives by breaking down larger functions into smaller functions. The same is not true for integrals. Some integrals we can't compute using the techniques we're going to talk about in this lecture. They require more advanced techniques, like from complex analysis. For instance, a common integral you will see in political science for inference is the integral of this thing here. Put dx. This notation will become clear to you in the next few modules. But this is the integral of e to the negative x squared. Unfortunately, that integral is not computable without complex analysis which is beyond the scope of this class. Um, so when you end up using it, um, you have to look it up. Further, the definite version of this, which has bounds, say from 0 to 5, is actually not computable using in any kind of closed form analytic solution. You can't write it down in some, some function. It's actually only computable numerically. You need a computer to approximate that integral, which is kind of a bummer because that integral is actually the most important part of inference understanding the area under a bell curve is fairly central to understanding the inference and you need to make to do that definite integral to do that and we'll discuss that again more in the next module but the upshot is integrals in general can be more complicated to solve and sometimes not even computable outside of numerical approximations so it's a little trickier in that sense um, the good news is you don't actually need to compute them that often compared to how often you need to do a derivative. Derivatives are required whenever you maximize anything, which happens a lot in political and social sciences. Integrals occur mainly in two contexts. The first context, as we're talking about here, is inference. If this is a distribution, then you might want to know what the chances are of being between here and here, given some distribution of probabilities. And again, this will all become much clearer in the next part of the class. We'll talk about probability. This is just to give you a sense of why we're learning this now. Well, it turns out that the chance of being between here and here, say this is 0 and this is 10, is exactly the area under the curve here. If this is a axis. This area here, the shaded area, is the area under the curve. And this is the chance of being between 0 and 10, given this probability distribution. So that's important to know. The area under the curve, as we just said, is the integral of the function from 0 to 10. So understanding 
integrals, at least conceptually, is going to be very important to, for having a good understanding of inference, which is fairly central to anything you do quantitatively in all sciences, <laughs> so social or otherwise. So the integral is very central to statistical inference. And even though you won't always be computing these by hand, it's really helpful to understand how they're computed. So when you see these things, it's not a mystery to you. It goes beyond just, it'll be more than just a list of numbers in a table. You understand where those numbers come from and you'll be able to manipulate them more easily for your own purposes. It'll help you use them um, more confidently, better, right? You have a better conceptualization of the concepts and it'll allow you to manipulate them um, more easily. Okay, that's one use. The second use that you see often is in game theory in, in expected utility theory. Expected utility is a way of assessing what utility you would get from some process given some uncertainty in the process. So as a very simple example, let's say you had some thing you could choose, x, plus some random event. Right? And let's say that random event had an equal chance of happening anywhere between 0 and 1. Well, what's the expected utility for your action? Well, in this case, we know it without having to do an integral. If there's an equal chance of being between 0 and 1, on average, the average is a half. So the expected utility would be, um, so if this is, so if utility is x plus epsilon, this is the expectation of this, and we'll get to what that means in the next part of the class, which is going to be x plus a half. And that's a really simple kind of stupid example. It doesn't have any real connection to anything we're going to do primarily. But the, the um, technology of being able to compute expectations of uncertain events is absolutely essential to understanding expected utility. So you need to be able to understand integrals to be able to compute expected utility, which is needed to be able to figure out what your, your best response is to anyone's actions. Now, again, don't worry too much about that. Even though that's going to be used in game theory, most examples we'll deal with use what's called the uniform distribution, which is a relatively simple distribution because it's much easier to integrate. And a lot of other distributions are not easily integrable in a kind of closed form. You can't, comp you can't compute them and produce a function. And game theory typically wants something tractable that you have a function for that you can deal with analytically. So there won't be a lot of complicated integrals here, but you do need to understand what an integral is conceptually in order to understand the expected utility theory. Okay. So that's where we're going to do it. Just to give you a heads up for the next few modules, we're going to tr look at the integral in two different ways, both of which make use of the fact that the integral, much like the derivative, is a way of understanding continuous processes um, by using an analog from discrete processes. The um, derivative was the limit of a secant. Right? You took a secant of a function like this, you drew a secant like this, and you put these points closer and closer together to figure out in the limit what the tangent line slope was. So you get the instantaneous rate of change. We could, in theory, compute any part of this area under the curve by kind of doing that. That's going to miss some area, this um, region up here. We get closer and closer to the true area by squishing these Rectangle, rectangles. So in the limit, as these go to zero, we will end up with an integral. It's going to be an analog to a sum. Again, that'll be done much more detail in the next module, but this is to give you a heads up. Okay, so that's it for this one. In the next module, as I just said, we're going to define the definite integral and see how you can get it as a limit of sums. Thank you very much.